Okay, welcome to force analysis. Force analysis is easily the most important thing that you'll learn in this class. And um, I would argue it's the most important thing learned in the entire sequence. So it's really, really important that you're caught up with your kinematics, your kinematics are solid, and um, now we're ready to go on to force analysis. It's really the main reason that Physics 221 is the prerequisite for both 222 and 223 is that you have these skills down. So I want to start with just a really um, straightforward situation and kind of talk in general about our approach to force analysis. So here we have two blocks. One's on a table. They're connected with um, by a string over a pulley. And what we're told here is that block B is falling and dragging block A across the table. So that's the situation that you can imagine. Um, we're first asked to identify and name all the forces on each block. So let's start that with, um, we'll start by just looking at block A here. And let's really think about all the forces on it. So I'm going to kind of draw a separate little diagram here away from the diagram that's given of block A. Now I know it's sitting on a surface and there's a string that's tied to it here. Right. So I want to think about what are all the forces here on this block. And when you do this analysis, this force identification, this is an incredibly essential skill to be able to identify forces. If you can't identify what forces are acting on a body, there's no way you can analyze that body. Right. That can't happen. So the, the first most fundamental skill is force identification. And then once we have the forces identified, we then can put them on a free body diagram in order to analyze them. But no matter if you're, I mean, your analysis skills can be great when it comes to the free body diagram vectors part, but if you haven't identified forces correctly, then your other sets of skills are wasted there. So let's talk about this. How I like to teach this for force identification in this class is that in Physics 221, we have only one invisible force. I'm going to say that again. In Physics 221, we have only one invisible force, and that's the force of gravity. We also call that weight in this class. Okay. Every other force, you guys, is caused by contact in this class. Once we get to t physics 222 and we're talking about electricity, we'll have uh, other non-contact forces. But for mechanics, there is only one, what I call invisible force, and that is the force of gravity. Every other force is caused by contact. This is really good news because that means that when you're trying to identify forces, you look at your scenario and you ask yourself first question, what is touching the object, right? It has to be touching it. No magical force is allowed here. So um, I look at where the block is being contacted. Well, it's being contacted by the string, right? So I can look at the string and say, the string is exerting some force. In physics, we call that tension. It's exerting a force of tension on block A. That's touching it, and that force is exerted there to the right. Um, what else is touching block A? Well, block A is in contact with the surface beneath it. And the surface beneath it, there, surfaces can exert two types of forces. One of the types of forces that can be exerted here is friction. We can have friction at the block table interface. Friction happens at interfaces between surfaces. In chapter five, we are not dealing with friction. Part of that is to just make sure that we get our force analysis skills under us well enough before we add in the complexity of friction. That happens in chapter six. I'm talking about it here because it generally is in our minds since we live in a world that is filled with friction. Um, so know that when you're dealing with frictionless problems, they might not feel very intuitive to you. Okay, so there's friction at the interface between the surfaces. Another force that can be exerted at an interface is the normal force. Normal force is simply the force exerted by a surface. And the reason that's called normal is because the direction of that force is normal to that surface. So, um, and we'll pin down the directions of these more when we draw our free body diagram, but friction is going to be kinetic friction in this case. Again, that's looking a little forward to chapter six. I would argue that that force is to the left or impeding the motion of the block in this case. The normal force is the for on the block is the force of the table underneath it supporting the block. So that's an upward force in this case. So those are the three 
non-invisible forces, right? Those are the three contact forces. And then remember that we get our one invisible force and that is the weight of the block. So gravitational force and in physics we call that weight. So the block's weight and then that's due to its interaction with the planet, right? That's what weight is. It's due to the gravitational interaction with the Earth. So, um, and the Earth doesn't have to touch the objects. The force of gravity is a non-contact force. It, um, two bodies can exert gravitational force on one another without contact. Okay, so for block A, we've got these four forces here on it. Let's now turn our attention to block B, and then we'll draw the free body diagrams. But I want to stay conceptual here. So block B, what it it is hanging from a string. Okay. So what are the forces on block B? Well, what's touching it, right? The only thing that's touching block B is this cord here. So there's tension in block B due to the cord. That, that will be an upward directed tension through the cord. If you're block B, you're feeling an upward directed force through the cord there. There's nothing else touching this block. It does have mass, so we have our one invisible force, right? So we have weight downward toward the center of the Earth. Again, that's due to the block's interaction with the planet. All right, so now let's go ahead and draw our free body diagrams. Free body diagrams are something that are a non-optional skill in this class, so you must be able to be drawing free body diagrams. Um, the free part means it's free of the body itself. So this up here is part A. We're now moving into part B. What that means is, here I'll draw the free body diagram for block A. The object itself is represented simply as the origin of the coordinate system that you're drawing. You don't draw the block or the bunny rabbit or whatever it is that you're depicting. You don't draw that in. So this is um, kind of a level of abstraction above what might be described as a force diagram. This is a free body diagram. Level of abstractions are good. They're a little harder to think about, a little more advanced, um, but all of you can handle this. So they're done for force analysis. So what I do now is I'm gonna go ahead and translate the forces from my conceptual analysis, my force identification process over onto free body diagram. So for um, block A, what did I have? Well, I've got the weight downward, the block, attracting to the earth. I'm going to call that weight W sub A. I have the tension of the strings pulling the block to the right. That's a rightward exerted force tension. And then we're going to argue that there, we don't know, this problem didn't tell us if there's friction or not, but if it's like a problem, um, if, if we set this up in our homes, right, there would be some friction there. So I'm going to put a kinetic friction in there impeding the motion of the block. We know the block, the block is, block A is traveling to the right and then the normal force, which is the table supporting the block, underneath the block. So that's my free body diagram for block A. Now let's do block B. And I'm going to go through the same process here where I look at my force identification diagram. First, I put in my coordinate system here. And again, block B is represented abstractly at the origin of the coordinate system. We don't draw the body in here. Um, these, again, the free body diagrams are meant for force analysis only. In this particular problem, everything's on axis. It's all fairly straightforward, but that's not always going to be that way. So we need to build up this skill as our problems get more complex. So block B, what do we have? We have the weight of block B. I'll call that weight sub B. And then we have the tension in the string. Okay. Um, great. And that's all we know. We're I'm not trying to like make magnitudes be any particular thing. We don't know enough about this problem to know what the direction of acceleration is. We don't know if the blocks are speeding up, falling, um, slowing down, constant speed. We don't know any of that stuff. But even if we don't know that stuff, we can still identify these forces. So this is something that um, you'll want to spend some time with and make sure that you're, every time 
when you're trying to identify forces, you always do your force identification first. And the question to ask yourself is what is touching the object? So you get, again, one invisible force, the weight. Apart from that, every other force is caused by contact. So um, if you find that you're kind of making up imaginary forces or putting in forces that you think should be there, then that's something to, that means that um, we're not using our analytical mind enough. So your intuition, sometimes in science, you have to set that aside. Sometimes it can help you, um, but you have to set that aside much of the time and make sure that your analytical mind is in the driver's seat when you're doing these problems. One more thing I just want to note about the free body diagrams is notice that we only depict or represent one object in each free body diagram. And that will continue to be that way through the end of the year. One object in each free body diagram. Um, okay, lots more to come. This was just kind of a quick intro to concepts and hopefully getting you to understand the um, importance of these skills and the concept of force analysis in general.